story how Brad and I met. He was in a band called Virus 3. Uh, and I was in a band with Kurt Comer uh, called Mind Seed. He jammed uh, across the street from Darren Jones's place, which is Virus 3 guy. And we came up, we, Kurt and I were just hanging out, jam was over, and we went over to hear these guys. And I opened up the garage door and they were actually recording. Literally the first thing Brad ever said to me was, you ruined our lives. Paul handed me, reached in his pocket, oh, and yeah. handed me a little tobacco stick. Cause I was in tobacco. Uh, he tobacco was working at tobacco at the time and he handed me like a little stem from a tobacco plant and he goes, here, you can have this. And as long as you hold on to this, we'll be friends. And, and you, still, like, you still have I it. I still have it, and actually we have a little acoustic duo <laughs> thing that we do sometimes that we call Friendship on a Stick because of that. That's, that's so, fucking adorable. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> so after that, they formed C2H508 with Matt Ramage and Kurt Comer. Yep. And, uh, and Cam Schooley was in the band. Yeah, yeah. Schooley was in the band for until he moved out to Vancouver. So for Yeah, I mean, so they were the really other heavy band that was in Norfolk County. Yeah. So it was naturally we started playing music. Uh, yeah. So at the RB show, we kind of hooked up and kind of became buddies, and we were just like, hey, you know, we should do a show together, you know, rent a, whatever, the rec center or one of the halls or something. Yeah. And then played 40 or 50 shows together. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 like at least once a month yeah. for three or four years, right? We'd play a show in Toronto, and then we'd come back and play a show here with you guys, and uh, at, like at least once a month. We play at least once a month, regular. all the time. Branford, Simcoe, Dover, and just did the scene, and I think we really uh, we did something, and it was cool. We got stories. shot down a lot of times. <laughs> I tell you that there was many shows where it was like we got a song or two in, and whoever was running the show was like, "We got to cut these guys off." We were pretty heavy, right? Like, so if they weren't expecting heavy, they they got a an earful and it didn't last long. And the whole C2 and VD have a very, very long history together. I mean, we kind of grew up and created the scene here, really, back in the back in the day. Our first show from Pumpkin Fest being 14, 15 years old. We were pretty young when we got started, so I remember some of those early shows, too. I'd like to explore, like, reiterate the whole fact that we were like, uh, I, don't, I don't know, you know, that it was like those bands and then it's all just been like a... Yeah. It's, it's been an out, it's been that. an outcropping ever since yeah. of the same ten guys yeah. that right. kind of basically created that whole music scene yeah. in the '90s. Before that, it was shitty like skid rock. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know if there was like live music wasn't even really happening. The younger kids wanted to like came to the shows and liked the, our music. Yeah, uh, none of us liked the older no. generation's music, so yeah. we kind of created the whole our own scene there. Like we were angry, and when you look back at it, almost unnecessarily angry when we were younger. Like we were a heavy band growing up in a like. You look around at a place like this now, when you're older, so peaceful, yeah. and so nice. But when you're 15, 16 years old, you start to get bored. And uh, <laughs> but we were always a voted three out of five riff wins and stays or goes uh, when we wrote songs in Van Downfall. Um, but Rudy really helmed the lyrics. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but Krentz sang it, which was weird because Rudy would write the songs and Krentz would belt it out. But when you look back at it, it's like, man, we kind of felt pretty angry, like, get us out of here sort of stuff back then. And when you move to Vancouver and you're like, oh, it's, it's beautiful out here, you start to mellow out. <laughs> it's hard to be bit. mad when you're so, so happy. Uh, yeah, so it definitely changed a little bit. You know, Rudy p went to visit to Vancouver and um, I, I think he came back from a visit one time and told you guys, like, hey, we should, you know, let's get out of here let's go move to Vancouver and so the violent downfall made the decision to to drop the jobs drop everything here and move to Vancouver well kept Kevin Hoover didn't have the you know he had a change of tune and a change of heart and he didn't want to go so Rudy I think just naturally said well let's ask Kurt I wasn't in a place where I could commit to going out to BC to be rock stars and I decided to stay behind so we um, Kurt was it in a good place here and decided to go to BC with them and it was a, it was a good switch for both of us. Rudy asked me and I said, uh, no, I, uh, I don't want to uh, move <laughs> to Vancouver. <laughs> but I was, had, I was just, you know, I was in a bad spot at the time. I didn't really like my job. I was back home and I had, you know, girl problems and all that stuff. And I just said, screw it. And I just um, called Rudy up one day and my sister actually said, hey, remember when Rudy was asking you like a month or two ago, why don't you give him a shout? And, 
So I did, and I called Rudy, I caught him off guard. He's like, who is this? <laughs> Didn't even know it was me. <laughs> I said, screw it, let's get out of here. So I just put my notice into the job, and frick, it was like a week. I had one week where I, I made the decision, and within a week, I Rudy was at my house um, picking me up. So. Yeah, that's the funny thing is Rudy picking us up. Yeah. Because <laughs> I remember Rudy didn't drive much <laughs> at that time, and it was May 1st. We made the date, May 1st, and we all decided we're, we're, we are. We're quitting the jobs and moving. And it's Rudy, of all people, driving the big van we bought, picking everybody up yeah. to get us out of... Yeah. Get us out of town and head to Vancouver. When I joined Violent Downfall, it was just natural for Kevin to uh, to get in there with Paul and Brad. I mean, they, they were out a drummer and they needed a drummer and Hoover decided to stay here. So we literally just flipped and I think um, for, for both parties it worked out great. I wasn't even going to play anymore and then Rudy actually said, hey, you should play with uh, Brad and Paul. I'm like, I'll give them a shot. So they gave me a call and then we jammed and we've been jamming ever since. I think the move is memorable for me. Uh, I mean, Kurt's got the van and a violent downfall tattoo on his arm yeah. because, I mean, it was that memorable. The first time you're all together and experience even driving through the Rockies. Yeah. I think we had, uh, what do we have? We had some classic song in the background in the van. Just, I remember hitting the it Rockies. It was uh, Freebird. Freebird. Uh, yeah. How appropriate. Yeah, yeah. That, that will gel a group of guys to go yeah. through something yeah. like that together. Yeah. So the move was definitely huge. Well, me. I'll remember this this one. <laughs> is, Don't say anything is going to get any yeah, 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 exactly. trouble with the Okay, law. well, I remember this is one good story. In Violent Downfall, when we were out west, we moved out west. And uh, our promoter gave us the show outside of, like, Vancouver. And it was a biker kind of bash for everybody. Like, the, the biker kind of show, which was like, okay, we were down to play anywhere. And, uh, we got there and it was like 20 bands on the thing, 20 shitty bands that we had to sit through. And this band before, <laughs> the band before <laughs> us literally had a song called Zig Hail. And we knew we were in the wrong place. <laughs> and these guys wanted us off the stage because we're like, we were singing about anti racism, right? It was like the total opposite of what we were in. Yeah. And uh, Kurt ended up whipping water on this guy that was yelling to like get off the stage. Three times the size. And he jumped up, this big fucker jumped up on stage and just bitch slapped him. <laughs> and his glasses came flying off and Ryder came Open running. Hand? Yeah. Nice. It was loud too. Yeah. Like, and then Ryder came running in like a silverback gorilla. He just started swinging on him. Oh, by the way, we're on a flatbed trailer. That's where we're playing. Uh -huh. And yeah, these guys the are trying to jump up on stage to get at us. We're coming down on them. And we, uh, the only guy that I like kind of befriended was the the owner the biker guy so he gave us enough time to get our shit in the van and we drove like over their cornfield as they were hucking beer bottles at us <laughs> and we drove out of there and that was a very memorable moment wow. <laughs> I, I, I got... when rudy came home from bc which rudy and i spent quite a bit of time when i was out and we BC. started jamming together we out, out there yeah. that's when we really started getting yeah. uh yeah we did an open jam thing in uh in, in Vancouver. Yeah, hosting the, the Remember that? Out there. That's yeah. great. We owed money more often than we made. Um, but uh, when he came home, it was just a matter of you know what what should what what can we do? Because we're you know, we were jamming acoustically, and we still do. Um, yeah, with the hot jam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've been talking about doing something, you know, getting an original thing going again. And Rudy is an obvious. Well, I started fit. bugging you. Well, you started talking about, you know, wanting to get, get back into doing something, Rudy in. something yeah. a little harder, a little heavier, like, you know, and yeah. that was the kind of way that we were starting to lean. Funny thing about, about that whole thing was we did this split disc with Violent Downfall, right? The C2H, 5OH, Violent Downfall thing. We did a CD release party. We had this band oh, yeah. Shape open up for us, right? Who is a band from Brantford that we knew. Uh, fronted by Starsky, who is the keyboard player, the keyboard player in Zeffler now, right? So everybody that plays in Zeffler was on the stage that night in '97 or whatever it was that we released That's that true. double That's funny. CD. I knew these guys because we used to shape my old band used to play with C2H and Violent Downfall quite a bit. He plays the knobs. He doesn't play the keys. He's he's playing a, a texture. Is what he adds to the music, not really notes per he's se. He's you know what I mean? Twiddler? Yeah, he's, he's a knob. Just the knobs. <laughs> yeah. That's what you're is a mad knob twiddler. <laughs> <laughs> I fixed a very troubled recording that they'd done under the name Binacorn. So they brought me in to sort of save that recording, 
And we talked a bit during that process. So Brad and Paul came and, and they basically were like, uh, they talked to me after and they were interested in you coming out and playing with, with our band, Binacorn, at the time. Brad, Paul, Starsky and I have been itching to do a rock yeah. Uh, yeah. thing for a long time. It's been in design for a long time. was really on our tops of all this. And I'm glad we yeah. waited, in a way, right? Because it allowed us to, re like, to go out and learn a crap load of cover songs and find a dynamic and a, and a sort of... Uh, launching point for what we could possibly do as original material. And adding Rudy was just was great. We could just concentrate on their instruments more and he's got a really amazing, very creative writing style lyrically. It's, oh, absolutely. It's the lyrics are fantastic. It's really good. So hey, everyone he's... is just on board. It's big time. It's mm -hmm. very exciting. It gives us uh, the addition of somebody who's not tethered to an instrument to put on a show and be a front man. Yeah. Which I think that music demands it. That being said, I didn't really know this thing was going to work. We kind of just oh, we still don't. Together, I mean, we had one show so far. Not to <laughs> yeah. blow smoke up your ass, but it was easy to play with these guys because they were so locked in. They were like a it's a ready-made band sitting. There. Get on down to the river. I was in a band for like two, almost three years. And as cheesy as you think New Year's resolutions are, one of my resolutions the year was to see this guy more. I only make one or two for the year and try and make it happen. It was to see Kurt Comer more often. <laughs> and it just happened to line up that he's like, hey, I'm starting to jam with these other guys. You need to get out here. And I show up after work in my uh, <laughs> dress pants and stuff from work and they're probably, these guys are looking at me like, who the heck is this guy? Like, really? This is the guy? Yeah. <laughs> That's sure? what I remember how it started. <laughs> I was a cook in an office building which where these guys worked. And I was trying to poach Kurt to be drummer in a band I had at the time. And he was like, no, I'm already jamming with some guys. And I was like, oh. And then a while went by and he came up to me and says, hey, are you still in that band? We could use a guitar player right now. And I was like, it's funny you mention it. I just quit that band three days ago. I'm in. And that was pretty well the start of it. I yeah. served them lunch and then we became yeah. friends. <laughs> when we first started playing, we had no intentions of it becoming what it is now. I mean, we all did the the original thing with you know, Violent Downfall and these guys had their own bands and everything back uh, uh, when. so. So when we started this band, the intent was just let's play some, you know, ACDC cover songs and something, get in some bars some and stuff like that. And yeah, some Sabbath tunes and that. And, and then when we started playing, we just, we realized that there was some chemistry there and uh, songwriting was actually pretty, pretty easy. If you come and see our shows, we at least have one song in every set that shows all of our influences. Literally from beginning to end. You can hear Zeppelin in a moment of a song, then you can hear like Tool or Metallica, and then you'll hear the Chili Peppers, then you'll hear Guns N' Roses. All in the just the progression of the song. And it's funky, heavy metal rock. Yeah. <laughs>
I always describe it as a bit of a, a cross between Metallica and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So in a little bit of funk, uh, a little bit of hard rock, a little bit of metal. So it's very tough to describe, um, but it's, uh, yeah, so it's tough to describe in one word. gentleman that we went to high school with, very kind of eccentric guy, he was big into, he, well he, he showed up to music class on a Monday morning high on acid one. He referred to, uh, you know, the bigger the joint you have, it was a Zeffler. So you're smoking Zefflers. So we just thought it was a cool sounding word. Hey, Paul says this word in jam, yeah. it, while we were jamming and we are like, well, if we ever start a stoner rock project, that's what it's going to be called. It was because he said, when I die on my tombstone, I want it to say, I bet God's I bet ten bucks God smokes Zefflers. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, said, it seemed like a really cool band name, and you never want to let a cool band name go by without starting a band about it. It took a while for us to come up with a band name. We yep. uh, we probably were playing for about six months. I think we were six months in. We didn't. We were talked about it early days about coming up with a band name, but uh, we didn't want to just pick something for the sake of doing it. And then um, we were writing lyrics for one of our earlier tunes. And uh, the song ha has some uh, some pretty uh, non-PC uh, uh, stuff in it. And uh, while we are writing the song, we basically just said, hey, I mean, this, this song uh, would get us some bad PR. It comes kind of from the idea of there's no such thing as bad yeah. PR. Everything's yeah. written and written by bad PR. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, someone will come in with something, right? I mean, Ryder's always got a couple of great riffs that he has going. You know, Jamie's got a lot of lyrics on the go. Uh, you know, Kurt's always got some lyrics ideas. Um, you know, I'll come in with a couple of bass riffs here and there, and we kind of just patch it all together. And mm. I mean, it's a really interesting process. I've never been in a band that has a process like this. Yeah, me neither. No. It, it really it happens during the jam. Cool. You know, it happens while we're in the space, and someone brings up a riff. We work out that riff, and then we say, where do we go next? Yeah. And we finish that, and uh, we throw some lyrics on it, and it yeah. works out pretty well. One of the first stories that I ever heard about Ryder was uh, when he got arrested at the Superstore for stealing cheese and batteries. <laughs> so we wrote a song called Cheese and Batteries. <laughs> and for the longest time, it was just named Ryder's Song. We have the foundation <clears throat> for a song that we kind of all three wrote. And then, um, you know, Jeff would go traveling for a bit, and then Jamie and I would, like, just make it a metal. <laughs> 
I come back and go, what happened? I know, it's so something, something that I thought was going to go one direction ends up going a completely different direction. Yeah. And it's funny because you can see it with some of these songs. I mean, it starts yeah. off a little yeah. bit funky and then it turns completely metal. Yeah. I'll come with a riff to, to the band and I'm like, I don't really like this riff, but it's kind of, you know something. what I mean? Says you know something. what I mean? Making and then, awesome. and then And then Paul will come up with something cool that goes with that riff that I came up with. And then I that, read a bass line that goes with the thing that Paul wrote. And then the, the original, and the, the idea, original is idea is gone. But it was the, you know, yeah. Yeah. the origin of the song. Ends up, I, I really like funny, corny music, and I write a lot of <laughs> corny music. And these guys don't let it happen. But or we, we always allow it, we allow enough it cool, in. But we allow <laughs> just enough in to make it work. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Mostly tries to interpret Paul's bad. Do this now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's a job in itself. <laughs> Interpreting Paul's uh, air drums, but uh, yeah. it works pretty good. We're always everyone listens to everybody's ideas and stuff, and yeah. you know, if I think of a change to be here, everyone listens to it. We try it. We work together as a band, and it works. It works really good. I think one of the best things about working with these guys is that no one's afraid to call someone else out on not maybe giving their best. Maybe not. Maybe not so harsh. Maybe no, sometimes it's that harsh. There's no egos. We but yeah, let's just say it. Everyone can yeah. take it. It's, it's, it. If anything, it's like you're absolutely fucking right. That's rubbish. Yeah. I should be doing something better. Yeah. And I, I, I like that. I, I like being pushed. We're all friends too, so there's no egos and stuff like that. So that's not like we're not fighting each other. We're all very open to each other's ideas and stuff. It works really good. It's a really good, fun process. The old stuff was more hardcore or metal, I guess you'd call Teenage it. Teenage angsty. This is more of a rock feel, and then the lyrics are completely different because There's the, er the early it's stuff was like, yeah, angry, like teenager angry. music, fuck the world kind of stuff, and this is more like we're talking about, yeah, it's, it's more evolved songwriting. Yeah, it's not really it's angry sounding music, but it's like stories and stuff. The old Violent Downfall days was the heavy, angry at everything kind of uh, release music. I still love it. I still listen to that stuff yeah. all the time. But the new project is more yeah. instrumental. It's more musical. I mean, the players, we've all progressed significantly from high school in playing. Yeah. And it's just, it's real good yeah. energy, high energy. It's phenomenal. I love it. It's just, it's kind of two different, complete different things. But uh, it really, really works. It's really good. I love it. It's one of my favorite project. Yeah. Right on. I, I'm, I'm a real nervous guy. I overthink everything, and I and I, I really get nervous before a show. And then once I'm up there, and and as soon as we start playing, like it's uh, energy just comes out of nowhere. It's yeah. like you don't you, you think how you're gonna do stuff, and then it just happens anyways. Yeah. Uh, Live performance is everything. It's a whole it's a whole thing of its own. Playing is one thing, performing is another. Doing them together and with the group is is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I know. I, I feed off it. In fact, I live for it. Yeah, I think there's there's just no feeling like it. You know, yeah. getting up in front of a crowd of people and playing music, there's just no rush like it. I mean, I, I haven't found anything else in the world that compares to that. And for me, it's, you know, if we can write a song that even a couple of people like, I mean, that's everything, yeah. right? I mean, we're not doing this for the money. We're not doing this to become famous. You know, we're nine to five guys. This is, this is a great creative outlet for us. So, I mean, perfectly honest, if a couple of people like our tunes, it's, it feels great. I just love it. I mean, you know, it's it's good when people are into it. They like it, you know. And uh, and I like playing for people that haven't, you know, maybe they haven't been there before. Or, or and when you, you always notice in the crowd, there's always a few people that are like, wow, these guys are pretty good and getting into it. And I, we we feed off of that a little bit, right? But uh, yeah. I mean, that's why we do it. That's why we don't do it for money. We do it for for just the love of music, right? There's not a lot of things that replicate the feeling of being on stage. You know, you can give. Anything you get nervous for is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Whether, you know, even if it's a speaking to people or a business presentation, it just, and, and that doesn't compare to getting on stage. I think if you're not getting a little bit nervous and stuff and that a chance to perform, then you're, it's hard to, to duplicate that. So. Ryder likes playing live so much that he'll he'll run out of stage and do a barrel roll and continue playing the song. <laughs> <laughs> That uh, happened once. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know, we're, we're never going to forget that. You didn't skip a beat, man. Dude, yeah. he literally he was on point. We were playing a show in Vancouver at like 5 a.m. in the morning at this totally party. illegal after hours jam <laughs> space. We're like, sure, we'll do it. It was like a black flag after party or something. Yeah. So we went, we played the show. The lights were raiding our face. Usually they're on you, but not right in your face like that. And he's rocking out, and he took a step forward thinking there was stage. There wasn't. 
<laughs> full front roll onto the ground, upside down. Wow, that was great. Cupped his guitar so it didn't Rock make any roll. noise. We kept playing. I believe it was your brother-in-law, Brandon, helped him back up, put him on the stage, and he just kept going. People yeah. were like, yeah. Well, yeah, we planned that. And, and, yeah, and that you was know, on purpose. <laughs> cool. you, you talk about memories created in a band, that's something I will never forget. Yeah, oh, I, I, never I, forget that. I remember <laughs> that happening. I remember how seamless it was. <laughs> we'll never forget that. Like, favorite album ever's kind of thing that just sort of hang with me all the yeah. time. You know, they always say, if you were to get the desert, desert island. Desert island thing or whatever, right. yeah. Mine is a, an MP3 burnable disc that I made myself. So. Uh, my influences are all over the map. Uh, I'd have to say Rage for sure. I That's mean, Hendrix good. definitely clapped in when I first started playing. That wanted, made me want to play guitar. Red Hot Chili Peppers, The Beatles, and The Black Keys. Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Guns N' Roses. Hot Sugar, Sex Magic, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I like Sticks, I like, uh, I like Old Metallica. It was Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction is something that I've, you know, that's one of my top five. Front I've to listened back. to that album. Yeah, Front to back, guy. it's just, yeah. it's perfect. I grew up with a lot more country because my, my parents are into country music. I grew up in a house that was all music all the time. My dad was a bass player back in the day, so uh, I was well versed in Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention by the time I was 10. Deftones and corn. I've been everywhere. I went to school for jazz music. I got really into bluegrass. Like the really heavy stuff. Led Zeppelin II is, is one that is just, you know, hit after hit after hit. I just, I've always been a huge Zeppelin fan. For sure, clutch, obviously. Bluegrass, I'm a lot more heavily influenced by bluegrass. Like Tim Rice yeah. is a ridiculous guitarist. Like Tom Waits and stuff, especially for vocals. King Crimson, yes. Pink Floyd, the, Be the Beatles, of course. I'm a huge clutch fan. I'd, I'd carry Blast Tyrant with me if I went on to a desert island. Really, really good guitar players. Uh, you know, That's Steve Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix, EBH. Jay Mascus. Eddie Van Halen, sure. Yeah, yeah those guys. I used to steal my sister's Sabbath tapes as a kid, so I had some Sabbath. <laughs> I still like, you know, Guns N' Roses yeah. and stuff, the stuff, Alice in Chains. Niggas for Life by NWA might be my yeah. other one that I bring. That Primus and uh, Led Zeppelin. And Bob Dylan, because he's a songwriter, like the songwriting part. So I really got into the guys singing, talking about stuff. And I like that they had shitty voices, because that uh, works good for really me. Okay. Early, early Metallica. I also make electronic music, so I've got a lot of influences in that realm as well. I like the guys that are saying something. they got something to say. All of our different musical influences are probably what makes Zeffler sound what it is. Animals by Pink Floyd, too, if I had to bring another one. I've got, I think you're at your okay, max. Okay, you're only about like, three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think yeah. Yeah. So we brought, um, I believe I just, I brought my bass head and not the cabinet. And so the other band had their bass cab there. And so I plugged it into their bass cab, not fully realizing that I guess my bass head was a little bit too powerful for the cabinet. So, you know, a couple of songs in, we all start smelling smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I, I'm not sure, maybe I was the only one smelling smoke, but anyway, so we're playing in a strip club, and so there's mirrors all over the place, so there's mirrors behind the stage, um, so I look back, I'm smelling smoke, and I see in behind the bass amp that the patch cord is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and so, no, I, I don't know if anyone else noticed this, but any, the show must go on, right? So you gotta keep playing, so I'm playing, I go behind the bass cab, and I'm trying to like blow out the flames as I'm playing the song, finally get them out, and then the patch cord is just fried. And I, I don't even remember how we finished the set. I think I just plugged it into something else. But uh, I'm really hoping that that other band isn't watching this because I'm not sure if they ever found out this story or not. But, yeah, uh, we better edit their band name yeah. out of this. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't played any Violent Downfall songs. Zero. It just hasn't happened. Young's in the interior, living in the woods. Uh, I don't know when the last time he's picked up a bass. Right. Obviously, Hoover could do it. Uh, yeah. We we brought up the idea when we came back here. Remember we were tossing around. Yeah. 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 Are we gonna do a couple song, old songs or whatever? But we decided no. And and the guys who haven't sung in ten years or whatever. <laughs> oh yeah, Krentz and Ramage were like, nope. We have a group chat in Facebook, and we added them both to the group chat. And we were hat batting the idea around because people yeah. were asking for it. They wanted to hear Violent Downfall and C2H508 songs, so people were asking for it and. Uh, we did the idea around, and then Brad had a, uh, a pretty decent idea where he's like, why don't we pick the same couple songs and we'll do one Violent Downfall song and one C2 song, and we'll both do the same songs, we'll cover them. And that'll be the real battle between yeah. the, the band from oh, the BC yeah. versus Ontario tour. And then uh, it was funny, because Matt, Matt and Jeff were both in the Facebook group, and then all I seen like, 
Jeff Krentz left the group, <laughs> and then like Matt Ramage left the group. I'm like, I don't think they're into it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> must be no. We've gone far and wide. Kurt's been in BC, so we've all kind of spread out and done our own thing for years. We were in BC for a bit, and it was just a good opportunity for everyone just to get together and have a an excuse for everyone to get together and have a good time. And I think that was what last night was. That was our first show that we played, so it was cool because this is the thing we've been working on for the last eight weeks. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, so not long. You know, yeah, I'd say ten I think it was tops. about the end of yeah, February. But it's yeah. really yeah. our little baby it. that we got to like, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. put like put it out for real there. So yeah, that was huge just to do it live, like for real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was pretty emotional for me, for sure. It was like, uh, you know, coming around full circle, totally. Mm -hmm. Kind of coming back to your roots. I mean, we played in Port Dover. I mean, Violent Downfall and C2 owned Port Dover. I mean, we played there all the time at that Masonic Lodge. Remember that place? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, we played there a lot, and it was just good getting all the guys back there. It was great seeing Krentz and Ramage out at the shows last night. It's been interesting for people that heard the old stuff to come back and listen yes. to us playing heavy stuff again. So and that I, must have been a trip I did to hear a, a number of people actually comment on that last yeah, night. Yeah. It was, you know, yeah. like this was stuff that they kind of missed music that they've, you know, not been listening to for a while. And yeah, you know, yeah. Like, wow, you know. The Actually, nostalgic one, feeling. One check outside side was saying, like, you know, you used to come into the brig, like, everybody's wearing tie dye. It's so good to see some black shirts and tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> like, she was like, oh, this is still happening, right? Yeah. Rock is still yeah. happening. Yeah. That was good. High school reunion with music, it's nice to be able to show off where, you know, everyone's known uh, where we came from, and it's nice to show them what we're still doing, and that doing we're still now. doing yeah. it after all these years. And it's, it's such a good, good hobby. It's great to see. A lot of people we haven't seen in a long time come out and just I'm excited about showing them what we've been doing since you know, the old heavy metal days and stuff like that. It was cool to see some old faces last night, you know, people that I, I recognize from the shows from back in the day. I think the Zeffler set last night was uh, a peak yeah. creatively. It means a lot. It just means a lot for these guys to come out and uh, it's just great. I think it's just a great night. Two nights of good bands, good music, mm -hmm. good friends. It's just amazing. We're in the process of uh, getting an album together, which is... Fantastic. Almost done, It'll be our right on. third EP. Yep. Yep. We went out to the island on BC, Gibson's on the island, and uh, uh, Sunshine, Sunshine Coast. Sunshine Coast. Sunshine Coast. Yep. And we got to uh, work with one of Gugu Garth's uh, protégés, so to speak, Carl, who was amazing. Yeah. Carl went out to this beautiful property just in the middle of nowhere and recording for. 18 or 20 hours straight and I'm really excited to see how that's going to turn out. Far the most professional thing we've done. Some of the best songs we've ever written to, which is good because everyone kind of says that about our album but like we've come really leaps and bounds with our songwriting. It does get easier, it's way better every time. We get to the real sweet spot in those songs way faster than we ever did. We like we can think what each other's doing a lot more. And um, it's uh, I, I think it's going to it's definitely going to show on this album, yeah. which is almost done. Going back underground, we're going to write yeah. five more. We haven't wrote our best songs yet. We're gonna, Ooh, we're gonna that go next back. one's the best. We're yeah. going to go write five more songs. Yes, we're going to make an album. Yeah, yeah. but we got to write a couple more songs. Yeah, we're going to write more songs and then make an album. It'd be nice to make this first record while everything is new and fresh and where the songs have been played 20 times as opposed to, you know, 50 and really refined. You know, we have future records to sit down and agonize over every note. This one I think is, is great that it was written so quickly and the album I think would be would be great to um, just pump it out and just be like, this is what we made, now what's next? It's amazing that it's almost been 20 years since we started creating the scene. We talked Has about earlier, yeah. 96, 95, 96, yeah, yeah. we started playing shows in this area. And here we are 20 years later still making live music and playing Something a show. Something to be said for yeah. that. Totally. Sure. Yeah.
Oh